a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order. And no doubt you'll be hearing about all the differences between John Kerry and George W. Bush. But we've discovered they do have something in common. During their respective college days at Yale, they both belonged to a group called Skull and Bones. You were both in Skull and Bones, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go on. I'm sure they are. I don't know. I haven't seen the web. Number 322. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first of all, he's not the nominee. And, uh, but, uh, look, I look for Are you prepared to lose? No, I'm not going to lose. You both were members of Skull and Bones, a secret society at Yale. What does that tell us? Uh, not much, because it's a secret. <laughs> Is there a secret handshake? Is there a secret code? I wish there were something secret I could manifest. 322? A secret number? Uh, there are all kinds of secrets. He's come pretty close. She was part of a team that successfully recorded part of the initiation ceremony that takes place in the tomb's courtyard. Okay, you have the doorway here. Yeah. Okay, then to the right you have a hedge and yeah. then you have um, an evergreen tree. If you follow yeah. that line straight back, the courtyard's in there. Okay. So, so that's where they have the ceremonies in the outdoor place. part of it. Part of it was indoor, so we only got to see the outdoor part. Right. We only got to and, and to listen to the outdoor part. God right. only knows what went on indoors. And what did you hear? What, what was it? You know, you managed to get this unique. Oh, it was disgusting. It. it was gross. I mean, they were pretending to murder people. What was the tone of it though? Was it was it jokey? Or was it quite no, it wasn't jokey at all. It was it was sick. It's about the only can describe it. It was sick. What you're hearing is the first recording ever made of the Skull and Bones initiation ceremony. It has never been broadcast before. Fifteen new members of the club are being introduced into the macabre rituals of Skull and Bones by the senior students who are about to graduate. The club has what some might see as a strange fascination with death, skulls and bones. There's the chance too, difficult to hear first of all, but including the devil equals death, death equals death. about the 2004 presidential election. Hmm. Now much has been said by the Secretary of State and others about a new world order, about a defining moment in history. I have no doubt about the potential of this moment to be defining in terms of history, but that definition can be negative as well as positive. And how negative or positive it will be will depend on what kind of new world order we really create. I will tell you about individual cases I've worked and investigated that absolutely without any question establishes there is a conspiracy and in infiltration into the lower levels of the government all the way to the White House. And this is the John Van Meter case. Uh, on Halloween 2004, John Van Meter, a woodsman from Wisconsin, had attended a conference in Sonoma County, California. And after the conference, he was driving home, and he uh, 
saw five or six automobiles, black automobiles, with people in them, driving into the woods. He did a U-turn and came back, and a safe distance from what was taking place, he could see a fire, he could see a girl in the nude tied against the tree, and um, the, most of the people there were in the nude, and um, he said, this is not right. So somebody shot at him, and he got his gun out, being a woodsman, he carried a gun, and he shot back. Long story short, he shot and killed four of them, broke up the ceremony, and um, rescued the girl, carried over and put her in the car. The others scattered, and he chased the leader into the woods and shot and killed him. Okay, he had a pretty exciting evening that night, didn't he? Um, he uh, looked in the, to the, at the body of the, woods, of the uh, leader and took a card out, a little business card out, and on the back of it was a 202 area number, area code. The next day he called, and a female answered the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The next day he called, and the line had been disconnected. And uh, when he was chasing the leader through the woods, they had a running conversation, and the leader said, we have the police and the FBI in our hip pocket here. If you kill me, you'll live in a 10 by 10 cell the rest of your life. What you're looking at here, staggeringly, is um, a group of people, some of the most famous people in America, in long gowns. Behind them there, you see a 40-foot stone owl. And there's the fire between them, next to the lake at Bohemian Grove. Now, one might wonder, understandably, why the people that run the banking, political, um, economic system, and the media, in America should be dressed in long robes doing a ceremony to a 40-foot stone owl. I think we should be told. Yes, sir. Uh, first question? Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, you gave a keynote speech at the Bohemian Grove Club, sir. A club which openly has mock child sacrifices and satanic worship, sir. Say, Can you answer my question, say, sir, please? I was very pleased. I was very pleased with my performance in the debate. It was a good debate. Uh, what about the uh, Bohemian Grove Club, though, sir? Uh, That's very important. They, they do mock human sacrifices there, so you reported being I was, there. I was very pleased with my performance in the debate. Sir, why did you ignore my question, sir? Can we have an open dialogue? If you want to be president, let's have an open dialogue about this. You just ignored me, sir. It's running up a storm about that Bohemian Grove over there. Human sacrifices and male prostitutes shipped in there yearly. I should like to know what goes on over there. Hey, just one last question. Last time we talked, you were kind of like setting up a storm when I brought up the Bohemian Grove. Why is that? The what? The Bohemian Grove. So in the in the rules, though, your first year as a high wizard, uh, within the first year of you being a high wizard, you have to go to Bohemian Grove. Okay. Everybody that's a high wizard has to go at least their first year, and then after that, you may be requested. Like there, there's a high wizard there every year, but but it could be because either it's your first year or you're requested to go back because you did a good job for somebody. What do you mean by good job? Like, what, as, as a high wizard, what would you do at Bohemian Grove? Um, other than the cremation of care, there's other uh, magic um, events that happen there. There's open, open magic spell work that happens at the Owl, and then there's also private spell work that happens behind closed doors. So you're asked sometimes to mediate, uh, two people that don't get along but need to get along because they have to move some agenda forward. Okay. So you're called in sort of like as a judge or a mediator between those two things. So you get those two people to play nice with each other. Or, um, you know, you're trying to get 
some mega road built through some place that would be worth billions of dollars to somebody, quite possibly yourself. And the person you're trying to work with, or the people you've been trying to work with, are cooperating. So you want to call in the high wizard to do a spell for you, so that either it's somehow smoothed over, or maybe the person that's standing in your way disappears in some way. Not but real. you don't want to get your hands dirty. You don't want to actually go out and drop them off a boat into shark-infested waters. But you'd like for some accident to happen to that person. Do people you who call the high wizard? Do I do a magic spell for you. That's just crazy. Do people who attend Bohemian Grove, do they know what it is? I mean, it, it, there's this illusion, you know, that uh, some president or something goes, and he doesn't really know what it is. It's just a camping event with a bunch of, of rich people. But do they really know that this is spiritual and it's satanic? During these ceremonies, was Satan the devil ever referred to? He was called Lucifer. Um... What did they say about the devil, about Lucifer? That um, killing the people made him happy. Sacrifices to please the devil. According to Teresa, the worst rituals took place at a house somewhere in the country. It was big, you know, expensive. From the front, it looked like a castle. You know, it had a long drive and big double wooden doors. Do you think they were rich people then? Very rich. The politician who was protecting this, this um, Michigan Mafia pornography ring was a guy named Gerald Ford. This is the same Gerald Ford that went on to become the first unelected president of the United States. Gerald Ford, I never perceived his political affluence. I only perceived him as another abuser like my father because Gerald Ford also sexually abused me as a child and sexually abused me right on through my mind control victimization until Mark rescued my daughter Kelly and I in 1988. It was at Mackinac Island, Michigan, when I was 13 years old, that I was dedicated to the senator who had become my owner in this mind control project. That's U.S. Senator Robert C. Byrd. Senator Byrd is a Democrat from, from West Virginia. And again, as you'll notice as, as I, I reveal any names, that this doesn't have anything to do with party lines. Democrats and Republicans both are involved because it's not about party lines. It's about who's for new, who's the new world order and who's not. We must build on the successes of Desert Storm to give new shape and momentum to this new world order. Only when this transformation is complete will we be able to take full measure of the opportunities presented by this new and involving world order. My sexual experience with Bill Clinton was extremely limited in spite of the fact that I was a sex slave. It was my experience that Bill Clinton is bisexual, leaning far more towards a homosexual end. All I've ever seen him involved in was a homosexual activity um, with very limited experience with him myself. Whereas my experience was much more uh, prevalent with Hillary Clinton because Hillary is also uh, bisexual, leaning more towards a homosexual end and it was she who accessed my sex programming to fulfill her perversions. I heard George Bush talking at that time. He was talking to, to Bill Clinton, and, and I've since photographically recorded it and, and wrote it verbatim in our book. That when the American people became disillusioned with Republicans leading them into the New World Order, that Bill Clinton, as a Democrat, was going to be put into the office of president. This was decided in 1984. Actually, I'd heard about it even prior to that. But that, as of 1984, they were already discussing it as an absolute fact. And after 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. And it, he was investigating him for financial fraud through a, an organization called the Franklin Savings and Loans. But then he discovered that he's running a pedophile ring and, and, and providing children for the biggest names in America. 
and he wrote this book, The Franklin Cover-Up. Child abuse, Satanism, again, they go together all the time, and murder in Nebraska. And what happened? Some of it got into this Washington uh, Times, a mainstream newspaper, the connection to the Reagan Bush administration, but most of it was totally covered up. Washington doesn't have enough to talk about these days. The Washington Times reported today that unidentified White House aides in the Carter, Reagan, and Bush administrations now are being investigated for using the services of a callboy ring. Obama and State Senator Lauren Schmidt. But the money trail led quickly to the original allegations of child abuse, and almost immediately anonymous threats began. I received a phone call on the floor of the legislature. Carter did not identify himself, but he said, Lauren, you do not want to have an investigation of the Franklin Federal Credit Union. And I asked who I was speaking to, and they said, that doesn't matter, um, but you shouldn't have that investigation. And I said, well, why not? He said, it will reach to the highest levels of the Republican Party. And we're both good Republicans. Senator Byrd had acted in the capacity of a, a pimp and prostituted me to Reagan, and I was president at this, with this White House cocktail party. Now, Ronald Reagan certainly provided a wonderful smoke and mirrors illusion for all of us. For those of you who don't want to believe that he's involved in this, he told you he's an actor. And he did a real good job of it for a long time. That was his role. That's what he was supposed to do. Dennis Hastert, once one of the most powerful men in the country and second in line for the presidency, faced a blistering dressing down from an angry federal judge in Chicago today as he publicly confronted a shameful past and was sentenced to prison. Hastert was convicted of a financial crime but it was part of a scheme to mask something more egregious, his molestation of children. Can we talk about some of the um, famous names that people around the world would know who, in your experience, have um, taken part in these rituals that you've conducted? You say you've conducted them in Europe and uh, the United States. Can we start with the United States? Uh, yes, um, I have seen at rituals, I have seen George Bush, um, I have seen um, Madeleine Albright, I have seen Henry Kissinger, um, I have seen uh, Ronald Reagan, um, and I have also, by the way, uh, seen his wife, Nancy Reagan. I have seen Hillary Clinton before I knew she was Hillary Clinton. I have seen the two sons when they were young the two sons of um, George Bush present at these rituals. Uh, did I mention Jay Rockefeller? Uh, and this present window of opportunity during which a truly peaceful and interdependent world order might be built will not be here for open for too long. All of this is, has affected me to the point I don't vote. All of these people seem to all be connected to the Illuminati, and I don't feel like being part of, of having anything to do with them. On this altar is uh, one of a number of daggers, which we may use in our rituals. This one happened to belong to the commanding general of the most elite unit of Germany's infamous SS, which was concerned with black magic and occultism research in general. Anything that it could find that had to do with the uh, origins of the human race, destiny of humanity. The perverted view of the occult held by Heinrich Himmler was of an evil magic that could help create a new master race. Wevelsberg Castle is where he performed his ceremonies. I have been to the Wevelsberg, which still preserves Heinrich Himmler's ritual chambers to this day, and have conducted a black magical ritual in the so-called Hall of the Dead beneath the Wevelsberg. Cheryl, okay. please, let me interrupt. The stories dump in the ocean, chop up the bodies, these things, they sound like they can't be happening. Ted Gunnison. 
respected law enforcement professional recently or retired now from the FBI, former regional director of Los Angeles. Do you, sir, believe that these dreadful allegations of babies being sacrificed are true? I absolutely believe it, without any doubt. Based on the information that's been given to me across the country by numerous survivors and by confidential sources and informants. Then why don't you name these people and arrest them? Never a name, never an arrest. All of the children who were showing signs of anal, vaginal injury, etc., these children were taken in automobiles by either the FBI, the San Francisco Police Department, other investigative agencies, and they were driven past Colonel Aquino's home, and all of these children were able to identify it. And they all claimed that they had been taken in that home to what was known as the Black Room, entirely painted black, where he himself and Gary Willard Hambright were both dressed in woman's clothing, and Colonel Aquino's wife Lilith was dressed in man's clothing, and they were forced to perform unspeakable and heinous acts on each other uh, and on themselves, and were, of course, molested and raped. Now, this was described at length and ad nauseum, not only in the Presidio military base, but also at West Point. Then why didn't you name these people and arrest them? Never a name, never an arrest. Item Douglas County, Georgia. I'm sorry for you, young lady, and I sentence you to a uh, term of life in prison. I'm sorry for you, and I wish you good luck. <coughs> Remove her from the court on that chair. 17-year-old Melissa Ernest and two other teenage members of her coven admitted drinking her 15-year-old victim's blood, then dancing around her still warm body. Now listen to this report from a small town in Maine. Yesterday's conviction of Scott Waterhouse for the murder of 12-year-old Giselle Cody may finally bring an end to talk of a satanic cult in the town. Never a name, never an arrest. He's a billionaire jet setter who's hobnobbed with some of the world's most powerful people. The man who has in the past categorized his business as, quote, investing in people, can now add this distinction to his portfolio, convicted pedophile. Here he is strolling casually through New York Central Park with Prince Andrew who was reportedly a frequent guest at Epstein's party. According to passenger manifests, Epstein's private plane even hosted former president Bill Clinton. We now know Jimmy Savile was a predatory pedophile for more than 40 years. He is now reviled as a pedophile, believed to have abused hundreds of children and vulnerable people. So how did a man with no qualifications work his way into positions of power the two venerable medical institutions. And why was his abuse never exposed nor stopped? It seems the answer is a combination of power, fame, and cunning. And he got a papal knighthood, of course. Yes. A private moment with the Pope, proof of Savile's uncanny ability to ingratiate himself with the great and the good. And the photograph also highlights another key Savile contact. The man introducing Savile to Pope John Paul II is Cardinal Basil Hume, then the Archbishop of Westminster. Catholic Church is facing scandals and being forced to pay millions of dollars for the sins of the fathers. Case after case of alleged sexual misconduct. 39-year-old father Gilbert Gothay has admitted that he sexually abused at least 35 boys. John Gagan is accused of molesting and raping boys as young as four years old over a period of 34 years. What's more, Father Gagan and other accused priests had been protected by Boston's Cardinal Bernard Law, once called the most powerful Catholic in America. Lucifer, Queen Eshito Kazum, 
Christus filius tuus, qui regressus ab inferis, humano generis serenus iluxit, et tecum vivit et regnat in saecula saeculorum. Amen. Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order.